What are you doing here all by yourself? The books. Frankie is trying to teach me things I can do sitting down. Oh, well, that's just great. That's terrific. You want to put a neon sign out front for Vinnie Morrison's relatives and friends and say, come on in and trash the place. I'm all alone. Did something happen at the wedding? There wasn't any wedding. Anytime soon? Well, I think the last thing I feel right now is like calming down. I just feel like my life is one big agony after the next. I am so sick of, of not being able to drive my car. I'm sick of waking up in the morning and wondering how I'm going to spend the rest of my day. I'm sick of running into former patients that, that think it's odd that I don't work at the hospital any longer. And I am really sick of people looking at me like I'm some kind of freak. What else are you sick of? Be sick of seeing Minnie Lewis spending so much time with Nick. Oh, I guess we should probably get out of here. You sure don't want to stay and wait for another chance to apologize to Eve? Come on, Melinda. I just feel bad because she ran out of here upset. Well, I'm upset too. So she didn't lie about the kiss. She only told you so she could start trouble between us again. Honey, you're way too upset to go chasing after I gotta find things. my sister. Then I'm gonna go with you. Fine. Wait, wait. Do you have any idea where Dylan might have taken Julie? Well, there's only one place that I can think of. Tell me. Come on, I'll show you. Julie? You didn't get married. No, she didn't get married. She's on your... <gasps> go looking for an excuse to get in the middle of them. I, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. Just maybe pretend that I didn't see Melinda kissing this guy, or... Do you think that you could just sit down? I mean, it's really hard to have an adult conversation with someone who's pacing up and down. He's obviously got one foot out the door. I mean, just... All right. I am in no way questioning your motives. All right, I, I can understand, uh, given my history with Nick, how you would be, well, concerned about me. Um, it's just that I, I would have felt uh, that I was disloyal to him after how good he had been to me if I, if I, if I kept my big mouth shut about all this. You. You seem like you don't approve of this whole thing. No, it's not that. It's just that I think that you have made some remarkable st strides in dealing with these old feelings for this for this man. I mean, in, in, in on the whole. And I just think it would be a terrible and needless waste for you to take some kind of a detour here because of an inability to just let go. Uh, none of which, of course, is any of my business because I am not your husband. I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not your doctor. I'm... My friend. That's right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what you said. Ed, you happen to be the best friend a person could have. A good friend. That's a blessing. And you're... It's well. It's great. You're able to make yourself available to people. More so than anybody else, because it requires too much. And you can be calm and sensible and empathize with people without being judgmental or 
or intrusive. And most importantly at all, you, you let people know that you care about them. You, you make me feel like I'm not invisible. You make, when I'm with you, I feel like a whole person. And that's my speech. If you ever, if you ever need anybody to make a, an introduction for you to a convention or anything, well, I'm available. I, 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 I'll get going. No, 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 no. Uh, you haven't eaten? Have... No. Uh, I chased a couple of crab legs around my plate at the country club that I... Um, I know how to make grilled cheese. I can make no. sandwiches. Uh-uh. If you're staying, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the cooking. i got a whole new cuisine here. It's got something to do with being a bachelor or something. <laughs> pretty good barometer about people and I was uncomfortable about Julie from the start and that thing with Macaulay well I knew that he just couldn't be capable of killing anyone well you were right Linda but he wasn't completely innocent either I mean he was covering up information because a little girl needed her mother yeah I know I know but just because somebody does something for the right reasons if it's wrong to begin with it doesn't make it right And why are you always so quick to forgive Eve? How do we get back there again? Because she's here. She's right here in between us where she's planted herself. And you know that barometer I'm talking to you about? My granddaddy would call it instinct, and he always said I had a ton of it. Well, my instinct tells me that Eve is still very mixed up and very unhappy. And her unhappiness causes a lot of problems for a lot of people. Especially when she feels like something or someone is being taken from her. Think about it. Why do, you, why do you think that she felt compelled to report that kiss to you? Do you think there's even a remote possibility that she was being motivated by friendship? No, I don't. First of all, I think she should learn to mind her own business. And if for some weird reason she felt like she had to tell you about that kiss, then... She should have told you that it was on Macaulay's initiative and that I pulled away. Well, maybe from Eve's point of view, you pulled away because you knew that she was watching. No. No, she knew that I didn't see her until I pulled away. Hmm. So who do you believe? Her or me? You. I know right now. I want to take you home. Right now. You can have her. It's gonna be okay, Julie. I'm sorry, Hart. I messed up everything. No! I'm the one that should be sorry for not having enough faith in you to do the right thing. I should have known that you'd never go through with that wedding. Oh, man. You talk about giving her to me? Well, Dylan, you can't give away something that never belonged to you. Julie's been mine all along. You don't have to convince me. You know, you're not the only one who suffered here. We all have. Julie, most of all. Can't you see she was confused? That she was fighting her true feelings? You should be glad it's all over now. That last night brought all this out in the open and made it clear. Julie had the guts not to go through with something that would have hurt us all. Yeah, I can almost feel sorry for you, Hart. You got it so wrong. Julie didn't call off the wedding. If it had been up to her, we'd be husband and wife by now. Ah, 
not getting ready for the after-dinner rush, are we? It's the only dry thing in there. Why don't you just go home? Well, because I don't have my key. I'll try ringing the bell. Uh-uh. I'm too considerate a person for that. Oh, jeez. I must have forgotten that about you. How could I have done Oh, Buzz, you're making a big deal out of nothing as usual. You know, you need Buzz Cooper's crash course on how to behave at public functions. Oh, really? That ought to be good. Do you remember the time that you got a little too drunk at a wake and you made a pass at the widow in front of the open casket? She he didn't seem to mind in there. She wasn't all that bereaved. Well, I think you've got a lot of nerve thinking that you could teach me anything about proper behavior. You know, the trouble is here that you haven't figured out is that over the years, I have learned to modify my youthful exuberance where you obviously have decided to perfect your policy of open wide, insert both feet. Oh, well then, pray tell. Let's hear it, Mr. Etiquette. Ah, uh, Buzz's rule number one. Remain completely silent at all public functions unless spoken to. <sighs> rule number two, if you are spoken to, A, respond in one of two ways, A, um, shake your head sympathetically and remain silent, or B, nod your head emphatically and remain silent. You and under no circumstances resort to violence. Well, since we are not at a public function, I think I'll just ignore your stupid little rules. It just so happens that Eleni is home with a sick baby, and I didn't want to wake her up. So I'll just wait till Frankie comes in and get my key. What makes you think Frank is going to show up here? What are you dragging me in here for? Let's get a seat. Nadine's rule number one. Use your intuition. It never fails. <laughs> Frank. Sit down. I thought you said you would help me find Julie. No, I said I'd drive. Oh, speaking of that, you know, I should rent you up. You must have run five yellow lights out. If I would have stopped, you would have jumped out, right? What if I had? I mean, who appointed you my guardian? I age? did. And right now, in the state of mind that you're in, you need one. Frank, why are you busting my chops? My sister is in trouble. Your sister is a grown-up. And she has made a big league mistake. You saw how upset she is. I mean, there's no telling where she'll go in the state she's in. Mallet. Julie did not scrape her knee in the playground here. This is something that she's going to have to deal with on her own. Oh, oh, so you know what my sister has to do. Will you just get do? a grip? Stop acting like a crazy person here. I mean, good common sense would no, just tell you No, I don't know about that. common sense. I've heard enough of this. I'm weak. I'm out. I'm not. If you want to leave, you have to come through us. This will break your heart. The family room. Nursery, Julie's studio. It's like a blueprint of Dylan's future. Yeah. So sad. It's just when you think you've got everything figured out, you know, like these blueprints. You think you've got everything covered, wham, life comes up and just clobbers you. Makes you wonder how you're supposed to know what to do ever. You know, one thing I learned while I was away is you can't, uh, you can't run away by living in your past. You know? What do you mean? I don't know. It's like... It's like when you read a book or you see a movie and you like it so much that you just want to experience it over and over again. Yeah, I did that with Casablanca. Remember, I rented right. it like two exactly. dozen now, times. Exactly. Now, eventually, even Casablanca lost that, that, special, that special taste for you, didn't it? You know, I used to fall apart at the end all the time. Where they're standing in the fog at the airport, saying goodbye to each other. It really used to tear my heart out. But, you know, you're right. There did come a point where it was all just too familiar to me, and it didn't touch me anymore. Well, I think it's the same way with memories sometimes. Sometimes they just lose their life because you've been reliving this, this perfect time over and over again in your head, and then suddenly you realize that you wasted this, this precious chunk of your life because you've been dreaming about something that doesn't even matter anymore. Are you going to tell me what you're talking about? I don't think so. You know, Josh, you haven't really talked about your personal life this past year. I mean, after you really accepted that Reba was gone. And you're not going to, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not. You still do it, you know? What? Push me away when things get too close. I'm going to use the, uh, the car phone, see if I can find Dylan somewhere. You're just being a sore loser, Dylan. I guess I don't blame you. It must hurt. That's no reason to make up lies. Julie never said a thing about calling off the wedding. 
She walked right down that aisle with a big fat smile on her face. Already be Mrs. Dylan Lewis. I don't have to hear any more of this trash come on. You wanna know how this lady really handled it? She lied all the way through to the last second. And beyond that, she lied this morning when I asked her what was wrong. She lied at the altar. She lied all the way through her vows in front of my friends, my family, and God Almighty. She lied when Bridget showed up and called her on it. She would have gone online forever and letting everybody think that Bridget lied. Whoa, whoa, wh what does Bridget have to do with any of this? Bridget's the one who blew the whistle on all those lies. She had the truth. She had it in writing in Julie's own words. That's the only thing that ended it. He's making all this up just to get back at you for hurting him, right? We'll continue with part two of Guiding Light in a moment. So Michelle left some uh, food in the freezer for Bridget and me when she went away, but I, we seem to be eating our way through that already. Where did she go? Uh, she went on a school trip, uh, sort of a nature study kind of thing. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah, well, it's fun for her, but Bridget and I don't tend to fare all that well in the kitchen when left to our own devices. Uh-huh. Did you have any cans of dog food in there? Dog food? We don't even own a dog. Michelle's allergic. The only pet she's ever had is a lizard, and she fried him on a heating pad. Oh. Well, I thought she had a cold, and so needed the warmth. Boy, how would she know? You had a cold? I don't know. Runny nose. Didn't you have any pets when you were a kid? Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, I almost became a vet. Mm -hmm. I used to tend all the little animals in the neighborhood, which my parents were not crazy about. So why not? I don't know. They just... I think they never really approved of me too much anyway. My mother used to chase me around the house, trying to comb my hair and dab lipstick on my mouth. And uh, the final straw was when they caught me in the kitchen trying to bandage up a snake. <laughs> well, the medical profession is very glad that you left the animal kingdom far behind. Thank you. All right, listen. Uh, <clears throat> my mom had this theory about uh, impromptu cooking, and it, it went basically like if you have really good ingredients, uh, the final product can't be all that bad. It's just in this particular case, I'm not entirely sure that, that she would call these ingredients all that good. So, I don't know. Do you, do you want to test this in any fashion? Um, it's not going to kill you. Do I have a choice? No. <laughs> uh, you know... Yum. <laughs> to tell you the honest truth, I don't even think our good friend Julia Child could have done anything with these ingredients, except maybe to cement the floor in here or something, but but all is not lost, I'm sure. It's kind of a hurtful thing to say, I... isn't it? It's pretty now, fair. Wait, no, you have the makings for French toast in here. So, mon ami, would you please just sit down and let a pro take over, okay? okay? All right. He's real upset, huh? Well, he just hates situations where he can't do anything to fix things. I know that feeling. I hope you didn't hear it in my voice, but... I think I feel as much at a loss as he does. I keep telling you, Belinda, you gotta remember that Dylan is a very resilient guy. You know, I mean, he's... He's taken some pretty hard knocks in his life, but... It, Never seems to keep him down for long. I know, I know, but it was different this time. I've never seen that look in his eye before. Hmm. He was so hurt and bewildered. Yeah. He trusted Julie so much. He just couldn't believe this was happening to him. Yeah, well, it was a terrible shock. Not just for him, but for everybody. But you gotta remember that he is level-headed, okay? I mean, he's not about to go off half-cocked doing anything crazy. I'm praying that you're right. Come here. Hey, it's all right. I wasn't... I, I wouldn't have gone through it. She's been lying so long, she still can't tell the truth. I'm ashamed of you. Shut up! Julie, I want you to tell me what I need to hear.
Dylan's right. What? Don't look at me. Dylan has said a lot of things. What exactly is he right about? Everything! You were gonna go through with the wedding? Well, I guess congratulations are in order. You'd better leave. You won the prize. You beat me Get out of here. Aren't you gonna party? Or are you wondering exactly what it is you want? water anywhere around you. It's tempting, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, at least you got to admit one thing. <clears throat> Coopers aren't responsible for the mess in Billy's family tonight. Mm, miracle of sorts, I suppose. Look, Buzz, I know that I don't always make the very best judgment calls, but how do you think that I felt tonight? Being there, watching Billy and Vanessa, he was looking at her like she was queen of the man. She was so smug, it made me sick. You know, the easy answer to that is you didn't have to go. Well, sure I did. I don't remember anybody demanding your presence. Well, I know I would have been more comfortable if I'd stayed away. Because I knew Billy and Vanessa would be just stuck together like two pigs in a blanket. So? So? So, some people run away from their hurts, but as far as I'm concerned, you have to face them. You gotta face them with a smile on your face, even if it kills you, because that's the only way you're ever gonna get past them. What a gutsy world. Drink this. It's good for the nerves. It tastes like brake fluid. That's strong stuff. It would not work otherwise. You know, <clears throat> you're so mad at Dylan right now, you're not even thinking about what happened to him. Now, he's a good man. I mean, can you imagine? That must have been pretty brutal on him standing in front of the whole town. I mean, think about it. I want to. I guess it's just a whole lot easier to be mad at Dylan than Julie. I don't know. I, I just can't figure this out. I mean, here's Julie ready to walk down the aisle with a great guy who will give her everything she ever wanted. I mean, security, love, everything. She throws it all away. Why? Well, I'm sure she's not the first person to be scared of commitment. <laughs> Look, she's young. And if this is about heart, Look, I know you hate the guy, but people don't always pick who's best for them. You and I, we just happen to get lucky. Where the hell is Harley? Any word? No, no, Dylan is not at Billy's, and I tried the Jessup farm too, but there was no answer. Well, it's probably for the best that he's not there. You know, I don't even know what, what I would say to him if I found him. Well, I think for a while people are going to have to yell and scream about what a fool Julie is. That's not going to help Dylan. No, it's not. He just has to remember that he hasn't lost the most important thing here, which is his own decency. You know, he is a great guy, and nothing that Julie's done can change that. I, I just don't know what was going on in her head. I mean, well, if she doesn't appreciate him, she doesn't deserve him, right? And someday somebody's going to come along who does, but it's not really going to make him feel better at this point to hear that. Time heals all wounds. Well, I can remember when those words sounded pretty shallow to me. <laughs> me <One> too, <laughs> boy. I remember just wanting to death the next person that came along. <laughs> but I really do believe that somebody's going to come into his life who is going to love him with all of their heart and soul. And maybe that wouldn't have happened if Julie was still in his life. Kind of like you and me. I lost Reva. I found you. And after I lost you... There were days when I didn't think I could get out of bed in the morning. And then I found Mel. Well, I just hope that uh, Dylan doesn't spend all his time wallowing in the past, you know. I mean, sometimes we forget that there really can be happy endings. You just have to, uh, to wait for him. You've been worrying about me, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, what about your Casablanca, Josh? Have you been replaying old memories? I want to tell you something. I came back here to Springfield for, for Dylan's wedding, but there were a lot of other reasons, too. 
There were some things here that needed to be resolved. And? And they have been. It feels good. I hope you mean that. I do. <laughs> you know, it's not like my life stopped when I left here. <laughs> Sometimes it felt like it had. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I've changed and you've changed. So now are you going to tell me what you've been doing all this time? Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> we got to find Dylan. There's no time right now. I really. knew you were going to say that to me. How did I know? Because you, were you know say me that. so well. Oh. That's how you know. <laughs> Where'd you go? For a walk. <laughs> I felt like walking too. Right off the end of the earth. It was awful hard the way it happened. In front of everybody. And Lewis is. Mendy's staring at me like I'm an axe murderer. And Dylan, the way he looked at me. You had a look like that on your face before. But I thought of all people. That you wouldn't react that way. I thought that you would understand. Oh, where are you going? Are you leaving me too? <laughs> Get out of that dress. still wakes up at night. You know, he's probably still having nightmares about being attacked by Vinnie Morrison. Rat. I'm missing having David here. You know, he still talks to him in his sleep, orders him around the <laughs> I had to wake him up one night because he was crying. He better get David's butt back here fast. Or I'd die of sleep deprivation. Did you get the keys off, Frank? Why are you so wild to get rid of me? Why don't you just go to bed, Buzz? Because somebody has to take you home, and obviously it's me. Well, I'll just go with Frankie. He's got other things on his mind. Well, yeah, and I'm not going to disturb him until he's through talking to Mallet. All right, I'm cool now. Let's get out of here. Hey, hold on a second. You didn't mean to tell me you're worried about Harley being with Josh Lewis, Frank, are you? The guy is a shadow from her past. Now, she never talked about him much, but I know the way she felt. I mean, she almost married the guy. No, 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 no. Hold on here. She was all done with that before she got involved with you. Look, first Buzzy comes back after 20 years. He freaks her all out. And now, Josh, I, I don't know. I just, I just don't get a good feeling, all right? There's too many ghosts popping up around here. Listen to me. There'll be no ghosts interfering with my sister's feelings for you. Do you understand that? <laughs> She's crazy about you, and you know that. <sighs> I'm just, I'm just a little shaky after what happened tonight. You know, I thought I knew Julie, too. Oh. How are you? Okay now. You know what? Julie's very young. She's gonna be all right. I just wish I could have predicted this. And then what, honey? Do you think anything would have made a difference? I could have talked to her, you know, set things straight. What oh, girl wants to listen to her brother give her advice about her love life? Yeah. I mean, just obviously she's confused, right? If I had picked up on this, maybe we could have avoided this nightmare. I mean, to have this go down in front of all those people like that. You're gonna make yourself crazy with all these ifs. You may think that you have some clout as Julie's brother, and maybe once upon a time you did. Hey, when she was a kid, she always came to me for advice. Yeah, but you know what? Julie's grown up now, and she's been making her own decisions for a very long time, and that's the way it's supposed to be. You know what else? There isn't anything you could have done that would have changed what happened tonight. I just feel helpless. I... Well, there's one relationship in your life where you still hold plenty of clout. Nothing's going to change that. Something else, Cooper, you know that? understand why bad things happen to good people. 
You know, I used to have a teacher once that taught us that adversity builds character. I have enough to last a lifetime. So does Dylan. Hmm. Well, then there's always the other argument that nothing bad happens to people who can't handle it. Do you believe that? No. Hmm. No, I don't. I think that we all have to do the best we can with what we're dealt with. I think that sometimes life throws us a few situations that can be overwhelming. But if we're very fortunate, we have people who we can lean on. Yeah. When I think about that scene tonight, I just... I feel so helpless, you know? Don't let me go, okay? I won't, Melinda. I'm never gonna let you go again. I know you mean that now. No, Melinda. No. I mean, these past few weeks away from you have really forced me to think about what I need. I mean, I have... I have a lot of people that I feel very close to, and I'm very grateful for them because they make my life feel fulfilling. But there's only one person that can make you feel as if you're home. I mean, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, what's going on in your life, you think about that person, and it brings you right back to what's basic, what's real inside of you. You're home for me, Melinda. And I'm not gonna let anybody or anything come between you and I again, ever. So, Ed, I would like you to tell me everything that's going on at the hospital. It's kind of like asking the Secretary General of the UN what's going on in the world. It's kind of a broad question. Mm -hmm. Come on, I just, I want to know what's happening there. I, like, what about those romantic paramedics in ER? Mary Ellen and Jose? Mm-hmm. Broke up again. No. Well, this time they didn't have a screaming fight in the parking lot, though. Oh, I could have predicted that. Just because you don't miss much, Doctor. What about Mr. Mitchell, my roofer buddy? He's still in ICU. He didn't lose the leg, thanks to you. You really miss it, don't you? Yeah. You wouldn't be by any chance be offering me my job back, would you? No, I can't do that. I'd give you a job in research in a no, matter of no, seconds. I know. No patience, though, right? Don't completely trust me with that yet. Oh, Eve, I... No, 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 no. Look, I don't, I don't mean to put you on the spot like that. It's just that I feel like a fish flopping around on a riverbank without my work. My patients, God, they make me so happy. They make me feel like I've got a purpose in life, and... And you don't give yourself enough credit? What do you mean? I mean, there are other people besides your patients that need you. Well, that's awfully nice of you to say, but... No, it's not something I'm just saying. I mean, surely you remember the fiasco of the uh, country club with Roger and Holly, and you must have been aware that I was this close to taking a drink. If it hadn't been for you, I would have been in some grungy bar getting absolutely hammered. And it was really nice to come out of that place and find you waiting for me. I never, um, I always picture you being so strong. Always surrounded with a lot of supporters and admirers and Bauer family, friends. I just never, I never realized this. What? <laughs> I'm lonely.
ever easy for us, huh? Yeah, well, all that's gonna change. We deserve it. <laughs> what? Nothing. Oh, come on, don't do that. No. I'm not gonna think about it. Not when I'm feeling so happy. Mm. You really think I'm gonna let you get away with that? Come on, spit it out, Melinda Sue. <laughs> Unless, of course, it has anything to do with Eve, then I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> well, actually, it does. Oh. With Ed and Eve. Ed? Yeah. I think that she's interested in him. Well, what brought that on? Well, she uh. asked him to take her home tonight. Yeah, well, it makes perfect sense. I mean, she lives right above his garage, honey. Yeah, which would make it even easier for her to latch on to him. If you and I really do make it together, then she's going to need somebody else to lean on. And there's Ed right next door. Hmm. No, I don't think so, Melinda. I mean, remember that Ed was here the night that Eve came completely unraveled. He saw her almost kill herself. I think if Ed is thinking about anything right now or feeling anything, I think it's... I think it's compassion. Being dead in their feet, we've been up for about 48 hours. Mm. Go home, huh? Okay. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Everything seems better after a good night's sleep. Even you, sweetness. Yeah, you got that right. Then we can concentrate on your wedding. Yeah, I'm gonna go get the car. Okay. Thanks, Mary. Hey, Mom. I, I don't think it's a very good idea to mention the wedding right now. Mal would never say it, but we actually spent our last dime on giving this wedding for Julie. You paid for the whole thing? Well, I mean, not so much me. It was more of his money. You let him do it. Well, how am I supposed to talk him out of something like that? I, I just think it's a hell of a thing to do for the guy. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I guess it was. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go. So, good night. Good night. Good night, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Frank, uh, thanks for keeping an eye on him. I love you. I love you, too. feeling pretty shabby about this whole thing. I wish I had all the money in the world to throw him a big bash. I'll do it. What? Hey, I'm the girl's father. Her broke father? <laughs> well, I, I think you've used up your credit line with Jenna Bradshaw, unless you've Ooh. got some other woman you can con, huh? Ooh, have you learned nothing about me? I have tricks up my sleeve you wouldn't believe. I'm going to throw this girl a wedding to remember. I know that you hate me now, Hart. But isn't this as much what you did as what I did? Do you really think that? It was both of us making love, not just me. Can I at least stay here tonight? Please, Hart. Please, I can't go back and face everybody tonight. Please.
this has been guiding light jewelry by swarovski